It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a brand new set of matches here for Street Fighter League Pro JP 2021. My name is Vicious, here with Sien to go through another set of teams that are going to be throwing down on the big stage for Street Fighter V. But before we get into all the action today, obviously this is the official English broadcast. And we got to say what's up to you all, but we got to say what's up to Sien first. How do you feel going into day number two after experiencing what we just saw in the open air Street Fighter League yesterday? I think so far uh, we have a lot of exciting matches, you know, and we already see a lot of the strong teams uh, going on the first day. We have Mountain Beast, we have uh, Komochi Shinobism, and today will be even more interesting because I think we have the most broken team that will be going on right now. Oh, okay, about the away team? Right here, I think they're gonna explain a little bit about the rules again, just like the last one. They'll be talking about the advantages that the away team actually has. Uh, the home team actually has. Because the away team has to pick their characters, their players first, while you know the home team can decide who to counter. I think this really makes a difference today, especially for the team that is gonna come in. Right, and again, in that final match, right, we saw how many points uh, go into each and every one of these matches. The first two matches are best of threes, one point each, and at the very end, it's pretty important because it's best of five, and it's two points for that match. So there's going to be a lot of advantages going into the home team, but there's also uh, times where teams can either go into like a full-on blowout or even into a tie match, like where we saw, what was it, last Tuesday or like two That's days on, ago. Uh, this ago. Yep, there we have uh, Mountain Beast and Dino Beast Gaming actually tying up 2-2 two two because uh, Higuchi lost to Fudo on the final class match. So having a draw score is pretty good for them as well. Yeah, and then we saw, our, I think our first team, Good 8 Squad, go home with a full-on sweep against Team Gyogun, uh, led by Mago, Mizuha, and, and Machobo. Um, but Good 8 Squad, they put in what? Kishipamu, Gajikun, and Pugera. Uh, and this is what you could expect for just the overall season, right? You're taking a look at the schedule before you. These are the teams that are going to be playing day in, day out, right? It's been pretty much, what, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, depending on where you're at in the world, right? Um, but this is what the schedule is going to be looking like going forward. Uh, just to kind of remind you guys at home, if you guys are looking for all of this information as well, you can check it out over the Street Fighter League uh, website in Japan. And we'll be sure to pull that out for you when we can. But for the meantime, take a screenshot if you can. This is going to be the schedule going forward. You guys do not want to miss any of these uh, these matches. And today we are going to have a Komofa detonation. Itabashi being the uncle, bringing the three nephews around, three young generation. You know, going to fight against uh, Nagoya Oja Body Star. I would consider it a kind of more new. These are two teams that are the teams are kind of balanced for Nagoya, Oja, Bodhisattva. What do you think about what do you think about that about that team, Bishes? So, uh, looking at Nagoya, Oja, Bodhisattva, the two players that come to mind right now are Akira and Oniki. Right, Oniki had his performance in the first Street Fighter League part of Team Ume Umehara Gold, uh, and did pretty well for himself. He actually got into the trial tournament again with second place. But Akira, this is his first time into the league, so I'm very curious to see what his cami is going to bring to the table. Whereas we see the veterans, Dogra and MOV, we've heard a lot about them, we know a lot about them. So without a doubt in my mind, these two veterans are going to be guiding some of the two shining stars in uh, this team. It's another player that we didn't know about, uh, Nagoya Oja body... Nagoya Oja or body star, I wish the Obiki. I think he's a very new young player who plays the cater. I felt that that is going to be something moving forward a disadvantage because he and Dogura has the same correct. What do you think about having two same characters in one team? I feel that that's a kind of disadvantage. I think there are some dis disadvantages there, um, but at the same time, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, if they're strong with the way they play the character, uh, you know, that's all they can really do about it. But at the same time, you see the kind of subs that they have. Dogra also has Seth. Uh, Oniki has a Karen in the back foot as well. I think, you know, Although having two of the same character with Dictator, I think they can also give each other advice when it comes to like certain matchups. They can actually like help each other out if they happen to, you know, play on the same in the same matches. Because again, there's four right. team members, but only three of them. So coming into 
Itabashi Steam. We all know about Itabashi. He has uh, Zangief and Abigail. And this time I feel that he has one of the teammate Tachigawa that I want to talk about. He actually has a lot of character. More than right. three characters right there. And he used to be, he transitioned to Dragon Ball Z. And then he's back to Street Fighter right now. What do you know about his life? Okay, we're gonna see the well, trailer right here. Going into it, you know, they have very, very strong players overall. Uh, so you have Hidewashi Zangief, Naoman, John Takauchi, and Tachikawa. But going into Nagoya Body Stars real quick, this is the best part. We gotta talk about the away team intro before we get into it. It's too powerful. It's way too powerful. Akira, I'm very much so looking forward to. Oniki, man, the bison pose is actually mad sick. The I think they're pose. all really good looking. This is like a really good looking team. Looking at the for the MOV, the master of vampire. I don't know when he get that his name from, but he does look really good for his age. He's definitely one of the yeah. OGs since young I already know about him. Yeah. And now we get to uh, Komufa Definition. Inabashi Zangief, of course, the classic, you know, the arm prank. Goes through that every single time. Naomin storming the front lines with Sakura, the usual, you know, very, very impressive record. And of course, the charming kid of light, John the, the Johnny Tech. boy in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, Tachikawa the bad boy, the returning spearhead, right? Coming back into the realm of Street Fighter V. This is his first Street Fighter League appearance. Um, the question you asked earlier about Tachikawa and how I feel about him, honestly, I think coming in with the amount of fighting game knowledge with a character like Honda on top of it, he's still going to be a very valid threat for certain matchups because I think a lot of these players, actually, I would say a handful of these players don't have enough Honda experience. So with the way that he is with fighting games, I think he's going to be a very imperative part of the team to throw the monkey wrench into the system of some of these matchups. Right now, we're seeing the sequence. Okay, they got the... Uh, Akira has the first player right here. And MOV has the second player. And Dogura will be playing Bison on the third player. And they actually put the new player, you know, the first appearance of Poniki on the bench. So we'll now see how the home team... They have one minute to decide right now. They're gonna discuss who they're gonna put out against Kami. What do you think? Let's, let's make a guess. Let's see who is gonna... Guess clearly who they're gonna put against. Mm, I'd have to think it'd probably be Naomin. Or actually, no, Tachikawa would do pretty decently against Kami. I feel like Honda and Saga are so the, the, the two choices that I'm thinking about. I actually went to like talk out the CFN and stuff, and I I found out that like CFN is a place where you can't hide anything. And Tachigawa is, uh, uh, I mean, John Takikuji is the one practicing the most against Kami with Cody. So I do believe he will be the first one coming up against. And I believe if I can foul from the CF and his opponent can actually foul about. So the home team advantage has been like really huge this season. I feel like you have a lot of character. It doesn't, it does not really matter because like you have to, okay, the one minute is almost going to be up. And I guess we get to see who they actually decided on the team. And one of the things we do want to mention is that going into it, you have to remember that uh, Kamufa Detonation is going to be having a one-point advantage against everybody else right now. You're um, right. Except for the other team, I would say the one that uh, the team that Takedo's on, which is uh, V6 plus uh, FAV Roto Z, of course. Um, because they John won Takeuchi in the actually played second in the preseason. That is correct. Yeah. And Tokido taking first place, so they really have an extra two points coming up. Despite you know, I want to say they have the one of the most broken team right here. But let's go with the Takeguchi. Having a one point lead is really sweet in a tournament like this. There we go. I guess we are both right. We got John Takeguchi Cody. You are you are 100% on the money. Uh, considering the subs that John Takeuchi has using that Cody, we've seen him use it over in the CPT qualifier not too long ago. A very impressive Cody at that. So that's I'm, I'm glad you actually looked up the CFN for this one. <laughs> I think if I can power about it, I don't think the opponent is that hard to check out as well. 
And I think Cody is actually a pretty decent pick against Cammy because of the B skill one. It's really, it's really good at slowing down the pace against the matchup. You use the anti air stuff, so John Daigo looking really cute with facts. Definitely a young lady killer. Right? Yeah. <laughs> John, uh, John Takauchi has always been that kind of cat too. Like, uh, you know, the the heartthrob, the the young heartthrob of the group, but also a very, very, very nice person just overall, right? Being able to talk to him, and uh, I still remember one of the first impressions I had of him over at Evil Japan was after the event. Like, you know, he went to top eight. After the event was over, he was helping clean up in the venue. Like, he was putting chairs away, and like, he didn't even have to. He was just there and just doing that. It was pretty interesting. Wow. That's really is a very nice gesture and culture of it. Especially he's that young and I've been doing that least a really good impression. And I really always like to see things. When people do things like this, it really warms my heart up. Yeah. So John Taiguchi actually all... just cut his hair today. Yeah. <laughs> Lone it looks a little bit different, you know, and they were just saying that it's actually paid by Tachigawa. So Tachigawa is like a big brother right there. Paying for the haircut, thick cutting, you know, and I really think this is gonna be the, the chemistry between the team is gonna be really good because of how the three of them are young players who seems to hang out a lot together. From what I see, that makes sense. It does make a lot of sense. You know, having that team synergy outside of the game is pretty important. Um, but we'll see how much of a factor that really is going into it, right? Akira uh, is also going to be going up first with that Kami. We talked about that. Very, very solid Kami at that. And this, when you're looking at his this is, record going into it, go ahead. This is his first appearance actually in the SFL. He has a lot to prove himself. He is actually recognized, I feel like, one of the youngest Kami. Or his uh, CFN PC6 Akira. I guess a lot of players has uh, learned about him. Like he has won the beginner trial tournament. You know, the SFL trial tournament he actually won. And he's the up and rising star. So this is his moment to shine. Very curious to see it. I mean, both of these cats look mad young, I gotta say. John Takauchi going up against Akira. Now, Akira actually did pretty well for himself in the tryout tournament number five. He was a champion of that. He was also a day one champion for the league going into it before they got to draft their teams, right? So he's already coming in with pretty significant accolades in regards to Street Fighter League Pro JP. Um, he's, again, having a threat as Kami is always going to be a good look. Uh, and being able to take down some of the other players that participated in the route that goes into, you know, being a part of the teams is also pretty significant. So we'll see how he how he does against someone like John Takauchi, who's pretty much well versed in the realm of CPT and Street Fighter League. Yeah, I mean, like John has been like taking down a, a lot of titles here and there on ranking tournaments and CPT before, you know, and he actually has a new character right now, Cody, which is not what he's actually known for at the start. He has been playing Rashid all the way and switching to a, I would say, weaker character because it's Cody is something that is really unique. I feel like he can, he's trying to be like the best Cody out there. And now we are going to see how this match are going to go. So you mentioned yeah, it right, really Cody is going to be the one coming out, going up against Kami. This is two out of three, the first matchup between Kobofog Destination and Nagoya Ojo and Body Stars. Here we go. Yeah, so we got a B skill, one that used by John Taiguchi, as you can see. This is really good for slowing down the pace of like Kami, because Kami cannot jump. As you can see in this matchup, Kami hardly jump over and you're gonna stick on the ground. It changes the kind of matchup just because like the B skill one is really easy. You just have to press two button, you get an entire. So you get to see Kami playing the ground game. Really rare. So you talk about forcing that ground game at a sharper angle, you know, Akira tried to go for the jump in, but the dive kick is way off the mark, right? This is going to be pretty significant. Yes, sir. The only way you can convert off that. What's good about that is since it's, it's a two mark, he has a good amount of life left to get it again. Big counter hit conversion off of the crouching medium punch. I like that. Wow. The scramble right there. John Takeguchi has 
doesn't look like he's playing really sharp right here. He hasn't done a single entire even though he just need to press two buttons. That this is a this is a sign usually that the player is not really focusing right here. So we'll see how it's gonna adapt to it. Ooh. What a EXP. What a what a sign to show it off too. Akira already making the uh, here comes Johnny Tack. Yes sir, big punish on that. Akira wasn't ready for it. Another conversion off of the medium kick. kick. I really like Ooh, the maximum three power piece. combo. So good right there. And now it's in the corner. No more entire again. It looks like Kira's. I don't know what John is thinking right here. Is he gonna be bait out here? Okay, now we got a robbery V trigger. This robbery V trigger can oh. change the game. Wow, that V shit for the win. Very very smart from Akira. That's all. That's all Kami really needs when it comes to critical art, right? Just any pretty, any, any medium hit could firm into like whatever she wants. Like standing medium punch into heavy punch link. It's going to be all of that. But let's talk about the biggest thing, the biggest weakness right now from John Takuchi. His entire game has not been on point. There has been multiple times where Akira not even has one. gotten the better half of those exchanges with those uh, jump ins. We know oh, there's the record showing right there after the match. There's the statistic right there. He has to start entiring that if, because it's not really like making Akira afraid of the ground game right here. Again, it looks like maybe John is kind of afraid of the delayed dive kick there from Akira. So he's... But so far, hasn't really been a single one. So I'm kind of I'm kind of afraid that Akira is right now controlling the pace. Oh, that's a nice corner right there. What a response! What? Yo, he woke... Oh no! Oh, Hell of what damage. is that? You he tried to back jump. spray afterwards? We woke up with EX jump, EX dive kick for a side switch with a round maximized two. combo and then taking down the round even after getting cornered. That is some high level play, right? Akira has a lot of confidence going into it, right? He nicknamed himself quick as lightning, trying to make sure that he uses that speed to get himself out of the corner, out of danger, put as much damage as possible. John Takeuchi has not found any answers yet. The neutral game hasn't been strong enough to stop Akira from jumping around. Yep. Technically, this matchup, you, you definitely shouldn't be able to jump against Cody that much. No. Oh, and the took another risk on the EXDP. Getting a crush counter. There's one more throw. Gonna keep it slow. Has no meter yeah, ready for point. Akira. Don't know how he's gonna score the comeback right here. Again, I'm not too sure. And this is the third time he got a stand medium kick come from. Ooh! That would have been dangerous. Still back or shoot double dashes forward, another back throw. Oh my god, if he sniped out that jump with like a heavy cannon spike, I would have been so impressed. John tried to do yeah, cheap damage. Is he able? No, oh. I feel that John is not playing really on point right here. Like, he actually has not done a single anti-air, and he is not very alert, you know, when it comes to, like, the ground situation, but he's always checking on the dash. I feel like he's putting a lot of attention on the ground right there. And I love okay, the fact that... Uh, Akira is not afraid to show off that card of EX uppercut under pressure, even early. Right, I really like that and that kind of tenacity from Akira to neutralize the momentum that John Takushi is looking for. So as the down medium kick drill, like he's never afraid to confirm it, you know, even though he may if he misses it here and there. That's the young man courage. Right? One chance situation. Health of Takuchi is really low. He hasn't been really careful. Any hit we have gone into a KO situation. Oh. This is actually kind of tough. He's still in that kind of danger zone with Akira being fully loaded. Oh boy. And EX Zog, tough game kick, double time over. Ooh. One chance. Oh. See how Taigochi gonna clutch this up. You see Akira is afraid to do the jump dive kick because like John is waiting for the B skill. No B skill this time. No B skill? Oh my god, B how many times is he gonna shoot? No way. Is, is it that hard to press the two button? I'm not really sure. I, I feel like John is really nervous. He's afraid that his B skill will be getting bait out, you know, by the dive kick. But he's already in the B trigger mode, you know, like that, that many jump in didn't really make a lot of sense. So I hope John, what? John, this is still the first time, the first Round match, one. like, am I seeing what? wrong? He's picking B skill one. I'm really surprised on, uh, not even one until, until, until now. So I want to see him adapting how his teammates actually tell me about it. 
Again. Yeah, very uncharacteristic. I feel like he didn't think it was going to be in time to recover, which is very strange because, you know, John Takuchi is definitely a professional. It's just... Okay, that was a little bit overzealous from the side of Akira going in for the Spiral Arrow after a block standing heavy punch. But John Takuchi now in full control in this corner. We'll see what Akira has in store to get out. He does have trigger on deck. He does have a lot of success getting out with jumps, but he's just going to walk it out instead. Yeah, he's playing it really, really slow. He doesn't want to take any risks. Doing stand medium kick, stand heavy kick. He's just like kicking one by one, you know, holding the zone right here. And a little poke right there from Takeuchi taking the round. He just came back from, from Akira has a really good momentum going into this game. But he just like got a comeback out of nowhere. Amazing adaptation from Takeuchi. Oh! That caught mid-air! Wow, I never What a combo! Oh, minus six! You're gonna commit to that? that oh my god. There was a punish on the reversal, but then like he drops it and Akira was a little unlucky over right here. No entire again. Oh, I'm, I'm oh that was a startup of a bad spray. He has to make a good decision right there. I like the jump right there, out of the corner. Yeah, Very calm. didn't even take a lot of damage for it too. That was just like an anti-air standing jab from Akira. Yep, oh, oh jump light kick this time. Okay, B trigger time. Oki gets for the win. And oh, the low. There you go. Forcing a block string, taking out a wow, look at look at the camera of Tageguchi right there. He is look popping at how off. He is so ecstatic. He almost broke the he camera. Is, he is popping up, but I, let me tell you the statistic is not gonna look good. That is a zero out of chalk entire. If they actually <laughs> post the statistic like the last time. This is gonna look really bad. I mean, I counted in my head, like it was at least an 11 entire. Do you remember? I, I, I don't even know. I stopped counting as soon as he missed at least like four, to be quite honest with you. Oh man. Surprise. That's the worst when they what zoom really in on you on. after a loss. Ooh. Wow, that's a really great start right there from. Uh... But it's fair enough, he's on the home team, so I do, he do that to choose. And like I say, he practiced a lot for the Kami matchup, so it's really good that he took the win. Showing that cutie little boy pose right there. This guy is stern for the camera. He is made for it. Honestly though, um, he needs to sharpen it up just a little bit with the anti-air department, but other than that, I think his control and pressure on offense was... Um, pretty point. great. I think yeah, it was good enough uh, for the matchup at hand. And you take a look, oh, one no. out of 11 in the anti-air department, 9%. <laughs> That's not too bad. He got one right there. So, I mean, like, we'll take we still miscount it. But I guess with this statistic, is uh, something really good as, like, even he can actually, like, review his gameplay and realize what went wrong. So, yeah. I love how they're explaining the anti-airs as well. Did you see that? That was pretty cool. I love the little tidbit to kind of teach the folks at home what exactly an anti-air is and what this stat is keeping track of. And then they talk about the invincible uppercut on wake up, EXDP. Only a handful of characters have access to that. So that stat, uh, although being tracked, not every character has access to it. So when you see it, it's pretty significant. We've seen uh, Akira kind of utilize that two times over. The third one did, or excuse me, the one that he missed did get punished pretty heavily, but you could see the kind of impact it has once you get somebody off your back with an EX uppercut. Like a really, really good video, you know, show players. Now they get their one minute is up again. They have to, I think they just started the one minute, they have to discuss who they want to send for the second player. So they do have a MOVS second player, Chun Li. So let's see who they decide to stand. <laughs> right now they are discussing on the formation of who they should be thinking of against Chun Li. Yeah. I definitely And they're looking at Tachikawa of... pretty closely. Yeah. They're they're thinking to themselves, you know, like Tachikawa, I think you should probably go up there. Poison, no, yeah, I definitely not. think so. Yeah. I can I, I feel like he has a good poison, he has a Dowsin. He has a Rashid. Like, he has every single character that actually counterpicks a Chun Li. I, I can't see a reason why Tachigawa is not going up right here. Like, Sakura, Zangief, Abigail is the remaining characters right here. And I, I, would, I would just take everything I can to say that there's no way Tachigawa is not going to step up from this.
three more seconds and they're gonna have the timeout right here. It's gotta be Tachikawa, right? I think, you know, also with Itazan, Itazan's not even, like, there's there's not even actual discussion going on between these, these this team. They're just saying, you know, we're gonna go as planned. Our plan is to have no plan, uh, but they're just mostly chilling. Maybe their plan is just to have, uh, really, I just hit Zangief and Abigail, don't surprise me. Are they gonna put a bad matchup? Wow! They decide to ah. put Abigail against Shunli. Even MOV has a confused face right here. Even MOV is confused that they decide to actually put up a bad matchup. Is he that comfortable in a, that matchup? Or maybe there's something to know about Abigail versus Chun-Li? Because a, a crack of that size. Crack of that size has made me feel like it's not, it's not gonna easy against a character like Chun. -Li. Yeah. So yeah, my mistake actually, Tachikawa is definitely the reserve. There was a symbol above his head that actually showed it off. He's actually the reserve for Team Kamufa Detonation. So by default, you saw the graphic earlier. Naoman is going to be the anchor for that team. And we see, you know, MOV gearing up with his interview. chun is going to be the character of choice. And of course, Dogura is going to be the anchor, as you see on your screen. <laughs> now everything uh, tell you. So we got Naoman going at the last one against Dogura. Uh, really, really. I would actually felt like Gawa a way better. I, I felt that like Tachigawa is a very good pick as a teammate because he has so many characters. Being the home team, I'm, I'm really surprised that they, they actually put him as. What an interesting fact that they were talking about. Dogra is saying his reactions get better with lemon aroma around, so he has some lemon. He made sure to have that exact aroma around him. What an interesting. These guys are nuts, man. <laughs> hey. Oniki not having any expression right here. MOV looks really fired up. Captain of the team. And him taking it one yeah. to one will be uh will be taking off the momentum or we're building out the momentum for Dogura for the last one. I wanna see how he has to go through the track. I got a big question for you. How do I get the shirt that Hamako is wearing under that blazer? That is a nice shirt from TGS. Where do I find go? it? You gotta <laughs> you gotta slip through the DM. I do think they are they do have like really cool shirts right there. Yeah. Yeah, being able to see all that again at Tokyo Game Show is pretty cool. But let's take a look right now with the matchup at hand. Itazan is going up against MOV. It's going to be Abigail versus Chun Li. We were kind of talking about it earlier. Like, who who would Detonation actually throw up next? Um, Abigail versus Chun Li. We're going to talk about it a little bit. When we're going into that phase in neutral, I feel like Chun Li outclasses Abigail when it comes to the normal exchanges just because of the fact that she is pretty decent range she has a fireball but abigail can get past fireballs pretty or you know only with the it's all right man like then, not, it's, not, it's not really that great and he has a zangief that is one of the best matchup against the bison so i was really surprised with the strategy that uh hitabashi and Norman decides to go here it was a uh, more of a surprise you know so i wanted to see how this actually works out so this is gonna be a player to player thing because even though Abigail doesn't do well against Chun Li, I felt that in the all the CPT and tournaments that I saw, Inabashi does well against MOV. It comes to player to player record. So this may be another reason you have to actually factor in. Actually, I actually want to look up that record now. I'm gonna take a look at the record between these two. Historically, yeah, you're right. I think Idazan has like the better yeah, despite statistic. always playing a bad, uh, not as good matchup, uh, it doesn't as uh, traditionally doing pretty good. Uh, three out of five. Yeah, they they they've played off even in like if you're just looking strictly off of CPT record, Inubashi Zangief has had the winning record against MOV time and time again, uh, from for years. I feel like. Yeah, like it's that like you just get that player's number right there, and you decide that oh, bad matchup doesn't matter. Because if I know what you're thinking, I'm just gonna go ahead. So this is gonna be... Yeah, maybe he's worried about losing to Dogura because even though Zangief has a really good matchup against Bison, I think Dogura has 
bought him quite a couple of times. So this may be the the reason they are switching up into how they wanna. There we go. We're gonna watch how he's gonna go through with Abigail versus Chun Li. Something I'm very excited. I was excited to see a grappler trying to pass through the the footsies of a crack to like Chun Li. Man, wow, he is so brave. Forward. He took like what three steps forward right in front of MOV's face. He's like, no, I'm not afraid of any normals you're gonna throw out. At the, I'm not gonna uh, block beginning. right there. Wow, he's nope. walking again. Is the, is the stage too short or something? He's in the corner already. Wow. That was so fast. I don't even know how, I don't know if he looked at the stage, but I'll tell you what, he's been in that corner mad quick. Or like, he got him into that corner very quickly. Yo, this looks like bullying right here. Like, he's pressing all the buttons that we usually don't see. Oh, nice check the dash. Whoa, this is, You're this actually is too good. My god! Oh. Iwabashi with the confirms? Back to back to back confirms, by the way. This guy is ridiculous. Yeah. Off to an amazing any, start. Any one of it on point. Now he's decided to uh, back up uh, a little bit. Playing. I think the strategy in the first round was really good. And wow, those jamins. The range of the down medium into the cancer was so good. Yo, but yet you MLB has not range. had a single answer. She has not had a right. single answer in neutral. He did. He's not winning no. in the neutral. He's not entiring. But don't forget, we still got a B trigger. Okay, pressure's on point. Trigger activated. You know, trigger two is gonna be uh, pretty decent. But at the same time, it's like, it is on, he understands the scenario. He's going to be like pretty much sitting it out and waiting for this trigger to wind down. He's not going to worry about it too much. And look at that. Okay, so now that it's all gone, Critical Art on deck for MOV, he needs to get a single confirm into Critical Art to kill. But it's a one hit guess between both players right now. So MOV needs just one hit and he oh, needs to confirm that it's going to be Abigail players don't drop combo. Wow, he doesn't even need a CA. I'm very surprised. That beat. Character it does wins. so much damage. He doesn't even need to cancel into the CA. That was a bad drop there for MOV. Yeah, pretty significant. Uh, something very unorthodox of someone like MOV, who's been been around the block when it comes to Street Fighter in general. Right, having that misconfirm, pretty imperative. I hope it doesn't like bug him too much mentally. But let's talk about the neutral real quick. MOV has not had the answer. Man, reacting over the fireball again. Itabashi saying Keith. It is wow. Itabashi Abigail, excuse me. Ida Gale is the new name. Everything is hitting. The stun, the jammies, the button, the midi, and the throw to enemy with a perfect momentum heavily in Itabashi's favor right here. Making all the right decisions. A jump again. Not looking good at all. There's no anti-air. How is able to jump every single time? I thought Abigail was jumping, like was slow, but look at that. MOB has woken up, giving a big fire right there. And missing the follow up afterwards, after the knockdown. Good punish, that was excellent e use of EX legs. So amazing, wow, and so punish many... just like. Those kind of battles from Abigail doesn't come out often, yet. so sometimes people may forget that you can punish. Another oh. miss confirmed. Alright, so a little bit more control now from MOV with the slight life lead, but you know, Abigail is a big fella. Also with trigger two, we're gonna see that life drain down if a single hit comes out. Nice work from MOV. He was actually looking for that just in case of, uh, you know, for a, a trigger activation route. Oh, this is gonna be tough here. This is actually gonna be very tough! So he decided he could actually really take it back! Is wow. he dead? Ends it. No, that's one pixel maybe, but you gotta get one guess. The dash is a real guess right here. Look at the ESP and it broke it. Nice, and the down lucky and a little delay on the second one, just in case MOV decides to do the EX spin and broke it. What a good guess right there. I feel like MOV does like three EX legs, you know, but it still doesn't really do a lot of damage. You don't think so? I saw like three EX kick hitting, but it, it assigns to it so much health. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's not much really MOV could have done in that situation either. When you're talking about, you know, Idazan pressuring you in the corner, he does such a great job of mixing between normals, command grab. It could have been it could have gone either way, but as it stands right now, Idabashi gets the W two O. Wow, perfectly done. I mean, they actually went through a more look at the smile on Itazan's face. They went through the unorthodox strategy, putting bad like a matchup that is not as favored but more of a player counter right there. And it really shows it's been working out. I wonder what he has to say about it. Not a single Eight, jump. Zero. Not a <laughs> You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, but at the same time, he didn't need to take any of them, right? He controlled the ground game very well. Itabashi Zangief, listen, even if you get zero percentages, you're still, you know, in line to get a W. You can see it right there. It's still possible to get a W. <laughs> well, all the monster watching at home right there, if you can't anti-air, don't feel bad. You don't have to worry about that. Look at the players right there. We all have less than 10% of chance of doing an anti-air and we are all, they're all right there. So if you can't anti-air, don't be too hard on yourself. We are all the same. That's such a, it's such a hard statistic to even like, consider because there are characters that just stay grounded the whole time you know what i'm saying even with the uh invincible uppercut or the invincible move on wake up how many times it's landed not every character has that you know what i'm saying so it's yeah, very Abigail interesting doesn't stat have to it. even keep track of it yeah a handful of characters don't have it uh bison also being one of them that's coming up for dogra yeah and uh, having no re no Reversal, you know, Invincible, gonna be a little bit tough against a character like Sakura. But I feel like this matchup is actually in Bison's favor because Bison can actually uh, control the neutral game really well. Uh, Sakura's buttons are, are not too bad, but then Bi Bison's one is just way further along with the Caesar's kick. So I would like to see how Norman is counter this matchup. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think Sakura has pretty decent tools to counter poke as well. Uh, you know, her normals are great for initiate, uh, initializing a neutral phase, but I think the counter poke game in there is also pretty strong. I think utilizing her walk speed is going to be the name of the game to kind of uh, play against someone like Dogra's Dictator. Uh, you know, you talk about the range that Bison has. However, the drawback to it is that his walk speed is probably the worst in the game. I think it's, yeah, I mean, compared You're to right. him and Dawson. You're right. And Sakura so, has one of the best walk speed in the game. You know, Sakura can walk really fast, you know, forward and backwards. So the capitalizing of using Sakura's walk speed is the key to fighting M. Bison in the neutral game. But then, jumping is also another tool that we shouldn't fo forget. Like, Norman, you know, may go for more jumps since Bison doesn't really have good anti-air. Bison's entire is generally lower because he needs to be a little bit more pre empty on his down heavy punch and you know his air to air jump medium punch. So we may see quite a bit of uh, jumping right there from Norman trying to take advantage of the low entire that uh, Bison. So we'll see how it plays out, honestly. Um, let's, let's talk about the players as well when it comes to like experience. Um, I feel like Nauman has had a very, very solid year, actually, oh, really? the last couple of years. He won Evil Japan. I mean, he yep. actually won Evil Japan. So I think yeah. that is a really great result for a young player. He may have the best result for young players. I mean, Evil Japan? <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Yeah, so again, also being a part of the league uh, a good amount of times as well. He's very much so well-versed in the league. Dogura, however, there has been a couple of instances where he's had his moments, uh, even in the CPT not too long ago. Um, but at the same time, we haven't seen him as strong as he used to be in years prior. But yeah. as it stands right now, he's been a veteran of the league for, what, since the first one? Uh, and also back in 2020, he's got the lemon aroma scent. He's ready for it. He's got, just in case, he's got that lemon aroma to help him out. That's the fun fact. He's He plays better when that scent is around.
he he actually really makes I mean he's a real OG right here. He's a top player in Beauty Gear. I do remember him being a top player in Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5, you know, Blaze Blue. Plays a lot of anime game I believe he plays Dragon Ball as well. You know, so he's an OG right here. So he has a lot of experience in, compared to Nauman. It's uh, very fresh, but Nauman has more motivation, you know, like the young blood rush, you know, in his in his head. Trying to uh, make a name for himself right here. Yeah. So very interesting to see the old guard versus the new blood. Really, um, very curious to see how the match is going to go down. Nauman has a lot more to prove, but not as much pressure. Being a part of Team Kamufan Detonation, we've seen him time and time again. Like in, in between every game, there hasn't been a single discussion of strategy. I feel like. It's just been big chilling for all of them. So I've got to feel great if you're Nauman. On the other hand, you're looking at Nagoya Oja Body Star. Right now, they're at a pretty huge deficit, but with Dogura as the anchor, they still have a chance to tie it all up with those two points at the end. Yeah, this is the more pressure for Dogura for sure, because they definitely don't go 0 4. While actually, let's not forget, John Taiguchi scored one point already for the preseason second place. So right Ooh. now, if they if Nauman win this, they're gonna be five points ahead. That is really really huge. Just for start, you know, for the for the first day, having a huge momentum right there. So I think Nauman is uh, very hungry for this, but I would like to see Dogura make this a draw so that uh, it will go even more interesting. Because if you have a very bad start, you know, for like a team tournament, the momentum keep going low. I feel like it's very hard to come back at the later of the game. So let's. Yeah, pretty significant, right? The only other team that has that kind of advantage because of their performance in the preseason is Team V6 plus FAV Roto Z, which is uh, oh, all due to Tokido getting that W. So that two Evo champion team, that is a that is a really broken team. And yeah. as for the rules, we all know that there's uh, no certain like way like you have to bench someone, someone your team on the player has to play. I think that is one thing that is very beneficial, you know, for three player, four player team, because uh, it's really a rule where you you don't there's not a certain amount of times player has to come out to play. So even if there's a need, can just bench any player just because of bad matchup. There's no certain aspect about the rule. So I feel like that's something. If they decide to send all their evil champions out all the time, that's not very nice. But it's gonna be really scary. Yeah, I think so as well. But we'll see what happens, right? Best of five, two points for this final matchup. The battle between the anchors is gonna be Nauman with Sakura versus Dogura with Dictator. Shout out to Tasty Steve, he loves doing that. Every time he sees Dogura's game, he'll be like, Dogura! Every single time without fail. He is very interesting. I mean, Dogura is one of the friendliest player I've met, to be honest. Always cheering, always smiling, you know. Although he's already in a quite family and OG, but he's always very happy. He's the second Mago for me. Very happy He's definitely player. the most animated person in the team i think at least because you have like kim and then you have mov mov also is is a pretty uh pretty jovial guy he's also willing to you know uh, show off his character on camera but dogura i think does it i think a little bit more too yep so we'll see let's talk about the match a little bit sakura versus bison right when you talk about you know the neutral phase, uh, we've already said plenty about that. But let's kind of talk about what kind of damage they can deal out with their V set, right? We talk about um, V trigger two for the most part for, or actually no, V trigger one for the most part for soccer when it comes to like dealing a ton of damage or a lot of pressure from the fireball game. But we're talking about Bison as well. I think Dogura in this matchup, which V trigger do you think he's gonna pick? I know like, I think V skill wise, he would probably pick uh, V skill one, but what kind of trigger do you think he's gonna pick going up against Nauman Sakura? I think V skill one is definitely the way to go because he wants to be absorbing the fireball and he can get like a really strong two. And V Trigger 2 is so good for Bison that it basically can be used for almost all the matchup. 
So V skill one, V trigger two is definitely the way to go for you know Dogura. While Norman is definitely going for the staple V skill two and V trigger one. Just when when it when the B skill and the B trigger is not so balanced, that's where you see like that became the Okay, there we go. We're gonna match started first to three. Playing on the boxer stage. The golden bullion. That's what I'm talking about. I still need to pick up that ruby heart outfit for Rose. That's you have to do the end. Cyber Akuma is really cool. Too. Those outfits. Yo, when he gets his wings every time he teleports, that is actually insane. All right, let's talk about the game. Yo, so we were wrong with Sakura, right? It's V skill two and oh, actually no, we were right. Sorry, V skill two and trigger one yeah, is we correct. Right. My mistake. So they went. My mistake. They went for the staple. Hey, Norman playing playing it the young way. So many dash and jump in right there. It seems to be working really well against Dogura so far. Yeah, so using he's, that uh, speed against Norman. Dogura. I like I like the I like the approach of Norman, how he plays the matchup. Because if you're not gonna win on the ground, you know, like you gotta play it fast. Look at those no anti right there from Dogura. Oh, oh. With the wake up stand. That was a lot of courage. I like that. Oh, Yekatsu, boy. You're Plus still gonna four. press a button? Oh my god, he is risky. He wasn't even at any position to press a button after that. There you go, it looks like they're pretty familiar with each other's playstyle. They're both attacking each other's weakness right here. You know, generally, all, all the players or OG players tend to be reacting a little bit slower. And the oh, beautiful Psycho Crusher damn. cross up! Ooh. Yo, Dogger so shook his head in confidence. He's like, you shouldn't have got caught by that. You should know that by now. Beautiful confirm stand his heavy punch right there. Pushing him straight to the corner right here. Now this position is really, really bad for Norman. Dogger is now playing it very slow. Like how OGs always play. The stand medium whipping yeah. just to make sure that B-Shift doesn't come out. Trying to bait out the B-Shift. Okay. The typical activation for Sakura EX Tatsu. You get a plus four, so you get a really good OK. Nice! Using the B trigger. Now it's going for the stun. Oh, the stun's no longer gonna be a factor, Dogger. Okay, maybe maybe not. I lied a little bit. The back though can stun. One more, one more. Oh, and those legs. One of it is gonna hit him. Pressing a lot of uh, kick buttons here and there, and one of it is just gonna land it. Now full meter for Nauman. Ugh. Wow, the dash. Full Kirk Lord on deck as well. Yeah, there's a lot of speed coming in from Nauman, right? Going in with those dashes and those jump ins. Dogra is still taking his time to find these openings and does so again. EX Scissor Kick, big counter hit, but no, too far out to get a conversion. So, the good thing about Bison with the EX meter compared to like uh, Sakura is Bison can use the EX meter. Yes, all the EX moves are really good. Wow, what a clean jump in. I was. I was surprised by how it the uh, Bison EX meter is really strong. You can throw it whenever they want and they have a lot of choices. There you go, spending the second EX meter. Oh okay. boy, the activation route from the EX Tatsu and now just a lot of pressure. No out of there! EX stops just clearing out the space instead. I'm liking this from Dogura, yes sir! First game going to Dogura. A lot of persistence there on defense. Like he's just hanging out making sure that he doesn't find himself susceptible to any sort of jump-ins or dashes. He's playing it nice and patient. Patient and really good. And he's using all the EX move uh, correctly. A lot of people doesn't like fighting against Bison because Bison has three EX moves that is really strong. And you do not know which one they want to do it. All three has a very good usage. So that is one of the biggest strengths of Bison. Okay, just kick. Very well, well spaced right there. You can see Dogura is keeping on a very nice range. A range where the stand right. heavy can get a confirm right there. He's he's mostly looking to play the counter poke game more so than trying to like initiate contact for the most part. From what it yeah, looks because like. I think Bison has really slow walk speed, so I think it's uh best to play that way if you make sure that you get an advantage right here. And somehow he just land Norman into the corner. Very good position right here. But he's not really overextending at all. He's playing it really, really low. Wow, the jet challenge right there. You know, the EXC kick. You, we talk about how many, uh, you know, invincible wake up moves a person has 
and imagine how that's a stat. I feel like the stat for Dogra should be how many times he succeeded with wake up life into conversion. Yeah, he has been doing wake up button into EX Scissors Kick and he actually hit every single time. That is his special right there. Okay, got a nice back throw. Dogra is always whipping the stab medium instead of the Psycho X because uh, he's afraid the uh, Nauman will go for the B shift. But Nauman has not did it once at all. Yeah, Nauman wasn't even able to do it in the last one because he was still in V trigger, right? So that would have been a good time for Dogra to actually use the Psycho X. But he's not gonna have enough time. Nine seconds on the clock. There's a lot of chip. Why did you go for that? No, not like oh. this. Most of the time, I don't question the decisions of a pro player. But at that point in time, that was a little bit overzealous from the side of Nauman. There was more than enough time for Dogura to get the punish. I don't know. I can't even imagine what was going on in Nauman's head at that he point was in time. Really anxious. The time is tickling down. He just wants to score. The round right there. Wow, that was a nice interrupt on the stand heavy to the Psycho X. Using the stand like it's a very good recognition right there. Okay, now we got a guess for the stun again. Nah, no. got a Jimmy, but still didn't get the stun. I'm telling you, man, wake up buttons for Dogra has been on point. But yeah, Nauman actually, he was off to a great start. Like, you know, he could have gone for a critical art chip from that last round, but carrying that momentum. Oh boy, the bomb has been planted. Now, the bomb is still there, you gotta afraid of the common grade right here. Mm. Dogura just chipping off the damage. Now he has 2 meter right here. 2 meter is really sweet. Full screen Psycho Crusher, you gotta be careful about that. When Bison does Psycho Crusher full screen, they are still flat. Yeah. Oh, you're actually you are right. a madman. The god stuff gets blocked! Oh! Are you almost dead? Yeah. Back will do it. One more back throw. Nice tag. You are right. Dogura challenges with the button into the EX Scissors Kick again. They and if that is statistic for that, you are spot on 100%. Every single mm -hmm. time Dogura press the button into the EX, it always hit. Yeah, this guy's a madman. He has not stopped pressing buttons since. Uh, Dogura getting the most of it, to be quite honest with you. Uh, already had a very huge advantage. 2-0 to zero against Nauman, but again, it is best of 5. These are worth 2 points. So we're gonna see another matchup coming in. Potentially the last one punish. for Dogura. There was a sure. minus 4 right there on the scissors kick. A little bit done, a little bit too near. Nauman, mm -hmm. this matchup really looks a little hard for Sakura. Like your fireball will get absorbed by, you know, Bison. And you just, your buttons are just short, you know, compared to like Bison. Nice punish right there. Recognizing uh, that was a guarantee punny. It's funny you say the that. I'm talking about like the short buttons. That standing light kick has been like the biggest tool so far in this round, stuffing out psycho axes, uh, counter poking as well. And it's one of the best light normals to confirm off of because it gives you Oki if you happen to go into EX or uh, regular uppercut, I should say. Yeah, you're going to the medium uppercut, you know. They... So, one of the very far as well, the stand light kick. Wow, both players are. Yes. No Psycho Crusher was surprised saying? by that. Yep, got it again and... Bison has 2 meter right here. So he can actually span it. It's just... Nice, I think that was not a bad... That was a, that was a very nice shit, but it was not a bad one for Dogura. At least he span... He managed to waste all the meter of Nauman. You know, because the raw doesn't look like he's gonna score anyway. So this isn't really a bad thing for Dogura. And now he has two meters. Beautiful cross up. And now the whole game just changed. You get put into the corner. I like the scissors kick right there just to get off the pressure. Ooh. This guy, Dogra, taking full advantage of that lemon zest. There you he go. Had a very great offensive sequence out of the corner, too. That was a pretty significant trade. Better for Nauman, if anything, because now it forces Dogra into this corner. Gang of damage incoming, just regular uppercut. One confirm at the EX can be more than enough, but Dogra now trying to fight back. Yeah, he always fight back at the exact right timing. That's actually amazing. Every time you press a light, he oh always my gets it. God! Psycho Crusher, not enough damage. Nice, oh. and the troll option select into the down medium punch to catch the Vichy. That's a very uh, calculated decision right there. Really good choice made by Dogura. 
excellent gameplay. Hey, stand on the meter, and now he get a confirm going into the corner. A very nice position. Like it again. Jumping around, getting the side switch as well, checking with the roundhouse, but now it's all Naomi on offense. No out of range. Yes, uppercut spending two bars of gang of damage, and the stun is imminent. But still getting baited by the throw. Dogra, what a time to actually commit to it because he knew the stun was coming off yeah, of the back. That's a situation throw. where you just have ahead. They are only guessing, you know, at that point because, like, you have no visible reversal, you know. So I think that Dogra has really managed to get out of it many times, especially with those light buttons, EX scissors kick, and like packing troll. So this is fair. This is fair enough. Round one. Now man should get some good reach here and there. Oh, hey. big crush counter to start off the match. That was a broken stand heavy kick. It just moved him from the mid screen straight to the corner right there. Yeah. Oh! Stun already! Mm. He's not gonna kill you. Hey, stand in the combo. I don't like the EX meter usage right there. The scaling of the damage is really a lot. Oh, what is this? Three in a row? And nothing, oh, in a row. nothing Dogra could do about it. Is this the opposite of stat padding? Uh, I think he's just jumping at a position that is so awkward. And then, like, even see Dogra was waiting for the entire the fifth time, but it's still weak. It's just in a... It's just Bison that doesn't have, like, a great anti head game if he doesn't go for the air-to-air -air right now. Nope. Nice. Yeah. He has to go for the air to air, maybe even like EX head stops, but even with EX head stop, you're still slightly susceptible to the trade. Yeah, that would be sad if you spend a meter and you still get get the trade right. Wow, I don't know what actually. really changed. The pickup from Nauman all of a sudden is looking really aggressive. <gasps> oh, I mean, you know, things are looking up for Dogura right now. That is the stun. It's gonna be the round as well. That's gonna be great. Building up some meter too. This is you talked about the amount of control that Nauman had in the first round. He was picking things up in the second round, but there was something about it. Dogura just picked it apart, and it all offense from Dogura once he got started. We gotta see that more often from him if he wants to see out these rounds. Yeah, I think Dogura is in a very good position since he's up 2-0 first. So the confidence level is very, is really on point. Nauman has to be the one adapting. There you go. Like you said, the stand jab into the buttons are always hitting. Oh! EX, Tatsu finds the mark, trigger onto the other oh, side with that V-Skill rollout. That side switch is a key right there. Now you got into the corner with V-Trigger. Throw again. Oh, oh that, that was trade. worth the trade, a thousand percent. It's gonna be enough? Yeah, more than enough. Wow. Now, in, that was an excellent time to make that decision. That was a split second. He waited, he deliberately waited. He's like, huh, if I trade off with him, the stun is gonna happen. And he got it. I was super smart from Nauman. And he didn't have time to go for a jumping combo, but Sakura just does so much uh, damage after the post stun, you know, that is more than enough to kill. This crazy momentum Round leading one. from uh, Dogura 2-0, and Nauman fighting back. That's the young fire right there, fighting back right here, not giving up. Very nice spirit right there from Nauman. And now you can see Dogra is going more on the aggressive side. He's actually changing up the pace right here. Nice, the first air to air. Like that, the roundhouse to check afterwards. Nauman just back dashes to make sure that he doesn't get any more momentum off of that. Yes, sir, the big crush counter. You talked about how broken it was, because now look at this. Already towards the corner, does get an activation, and all this pressure that follows through after him. No. He dropped it! Oh. He dropped it! No, that is big. That's the big one. That is almost for the win as well. This is game changing right here. No way. And no, Dogura oh, can actually no, the drop the combo. Stacks, yes. Dogura can He's actually make the, the combo in, into the Psycho Crusher to stun, but they're both dropping here and there, but it's really good momentum for Dogura. You can see how nervous both of them actually is right now. One is fighting for a clean sweep and Dogra is match point right now, trying to score two points for his teammate. That's actually ridiculous. Gain the air to it this time a little bit slower. Wow, I would say that uh, Norman is really good at interrupting those uh, strings in between, recognizing when to press a button as well. 
Okay, I lost that medium kick. A little bit too close. Getting punished. There you go, the favorite activation for Asu. Sakura. Man, Dogra is still able to fire back with some of these lights to steal his turns of, uh, steal his turns back from Dalman. It's been so solid. That's the that's the experience right there. But and Dogra has shuffled on his head to again right now. Oh, that, oh. that is a big. Oh, wait! <laughs> you would think a character like Bison or Dictator is able to shimmy you at that slow walk speed. That is so dangerous. But to be fair, he has the, one of the best back throws in the game in terms of range so i don't blame nauman for biting on that three to two on the side of dogra but i will say that was very impressive from nauman almost on, uh getting that comeback slowest shimmy i've ever seen he was like standing there walking left and right and oh he landed the down medium he's like yes two points i got it right there wow i guess his uh mov's teammate is very happy they're gonna buy him some yakiniku tonight He'll happy him for saving up the team. Draw two to two. The entire statistic. I yeah, I don't want to look at that statistic to be honest with you. I can bet you, I can guarantee you that the statistic for invincible reversals on the side of Dogra is gonna be zero percent. But all jokes aside, um, <laughs> it's gonna be pretty decent for detonation. Although they only have two points, they're still technically going to be in second place because they have that bonus point from the preseason. Yeah, the because bonus of the fact point that John from Takeuchi John got Takeuchi. second place. Yep. So it's uh, not a bad one for uh, both teams, I would say, for better for team that nation. Okay, 5 out of 11. This entire stats are really ugly. I felt like the, I felt like the audience all felt a lot better knowing that actually entire is not as easy as people think. You know, you don't look at Twitter and say you have to entire every single job in. But when it comes to pro, high level, high pressure, leg like this, all the percentage are that bad. Yeah. To be fair though, uh, you know, Sakura neutral jumping in your face as Bison is not fun to deal with. There was that moment where Nauman jumped three times straight. It was like, okay, how do you how do you even stop that? But we are going into the home team interview uh, due to the fact that it was a tie game after all with Itazan. So very interesting to see what his demeanor is like because they were very they were very much so chilling in every interview, right? They were chilling. They didn't have like a full strategy that they uh, uh, talked about. They were just chit chatting the whole time. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, they look like like they say here. They have a pre plan already, so I think they're just going ahead with what they already planned, so they don't do any last gen right here. So Inazan feels it's all right having two and two. Uh, it's only the first match after all, and everyone is still getting used to it. So a lot more to work with, and I like the positivity there. Um, and they're still in a decent position because of that extra point. So not bad at all for Team Kabufa Detonation. Nagoya Oja Body Stars, however, also doing pretty decently getting those two points, all because of that anchor Dogura. Um, do you think there could have been a significant difference if uh, Itabashi had gone up against Dogura? Itabashi Zangif is uh, one of the best champions actually against Bison. That's what from what I know and what I saw all the time. But surprisingly, I don't think Itabashi has a very good track record against Dogura. But I do believe uh, Itabashi has been studying the matchup a lot because they have two bison in their team. Like, you have to fight a bison, right? I felt like the decision to actually uh, speak uh, Tach Tachigawa out was uh, very surprising for me. And using Nauman's Kura to fight bison. Overall, I just don't agree with the way they, they send out the players. I think it can be done better. But yeah, what do I know? Go ahead. And then like looking at this looking at this format, I feel like their team has grapplers, they have uh, rare characters like Sakura, you have a uh, Cody and Rashid, and they also have Tachigao who plays all the poison 
you know, Dao Sim, Jun Li. They are actually really, really strong when it comes to them being in the home team. So when they have the home team, they are super strong. And I felt like it's a waste that they didn't take this 4-0. Yeah, it's tough because Inazan said it in the interviews. They expected a few variations of the matchups. They tried their best to practice for it. And he also thinks the variations is what makes it def very difficult, right? Having all these characters at hand and also trying to figure out the order. But as it stands right now, I'll come with our detonation. Draw. It has a draw game between uh, Nagoya Oja Body Star. But we still have another matchup coming your way after this break. It's going to be Saishin Console Kumamoto going up against V6 plus. FAV Roto Z, that's a mouthful, but I'll tell you what, all the Street Fighter V action coming your way in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more SFL Pro JP 2021. Looking forward. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Street Fighter League Pro JP 2021. Not even close yet. Never mind. 
ております続いてはマッチ2の組み合わせ、hey, and, uh... 先ほど申し上げた通り最終関ソール熊本そして So yeah, we were looking at the matchup that happened earlier between k a m u f a Detonation and Nagoya Oja Body Star Right, we saw that tie happen towards the end n a l m a n was unsuccessful in trying to reclaim that match against Dogura being at a 2-0 deficit in the beginning Dogura managed to clutch it out either way with that dictator but we're moving on to the next match with Saishin Kanso Kumamoto and V6 plus FAV Roto Z now as much of a mouthful as that is you should take a look at the roster when we get that chance to take a look at them because honestly both of these teams have characters or have players that we're both looking forward to seeing in the spotlight I think everyone will not disagree that there is a broken team right there. I don't think there's ever been a team with two EVO champions and a legend like Sako. But I honestly, I think this has been r e c t tension of many players. But let's not count n e m o n e m o is、uh, one of the players that you can never count out. There we go. Sako Noko. Three characters in his pocket. The Nat, Hage, G, Dash. Of course, you say one of the young bloods for the team, actually, the youngest one on the team. But here's, here's what we wanted to see, right? Tokido, Evo champion with Yurian. Bon Chan, another Evo champion with Sagat. Yo, the cup at me. He's so sick.、And、He's actually the sickest. He, he not only has Sagat, he actually has a Nash. And he also has like he has so many characters in his pocket and a Karin as well. But yeah, so many characters that I cannot remember how many he plays. But the, the thing is that advantage is not significant for him now because he's on the away side. Okay, let's get him through the Nemo team. So s a s h i m k a n has Nemo, he's been rocking out with Gil and y u r i a n Shuto is somebody I've been looking forward to watching with that Yurian as well. Michikin also with Blanca. That one I'm kind of curious to see. <laughs> And of course, Rana get out. Yanai, a man that I have not seen play yet. But、yes. I will say this is his first appearance. And was the tournament champion for the tryout in the eighth yeah, slot. He and the boxer, this is his time to perform. Two young bloods and two old ones. Look at their faces. Look at Nemo's fam, fam, very vicious and emperor face. You can feel it right there just from looking at their screen. But how. Okay, we got the cast ready. We got. Oh, we, they actually put out two Yurian and Bon Chan Sagat. I am so. He is gonna be fighting a guild right here. Like, among all the characters, like, Sagat really beats every character in Nemo's team. Like, Yurian, Blanca. You know, like, Sagat has a good shot against them. So now they have one minute to think how they're gonna go. I'm so sure they're gonna fight Gil. Because here's, Gil is here's really. Here's the story though. Like, Nemo and Shuto being the Yurian mains, they're gonna have a really decent time in the matchup. They fully understand how the character operates. Tokino, as much success as he's had this year, this is his first year really exploring, exploring this character, I feel like. Respectively. Granted, Tokino is a grandmaster. He is like、uh, one of the Street Fighter gods. But again, the fact still stands. Nemo is very much so efficient with Yurian. Shuto, the same way. So they have to have, you know, a firm understanding to give themselves the upper hand as the home team to set this off right with the counter picks. I really want to see what is the decision because I've been looking at their CFS and I know Bon Chan is practicing with all the gills. Rating for Nemo. I wonder if Nemo is gonna change up the strategy to, to go with someone unexpected since Nemo kind of said that the translation that he he's really expected this or Sagat to be going on the last. That is the disadvantage for Bon Chan being on the away side. He has three characters,、yeah. but he has to pick up one of them and it's Sagat. So I'm very curious who they are gonna be putting to fight against. Bonchan because Yurian is a matchup that Bonchan always does pretty well against. So I can't、yeah. see anyone but Nemo taking the last slot as the leader and has a good matchup to fight against Bonchan. Right. 
But you also have, again, when you talk about the characters that are also present, other than the Yurians from both sides, right? We'll talk about uh, Session Khan. Nishiken has a Blanca, and Yanai has both a G and a Boxer. So, with that in mind, do you think that's going to be significant? Oh, significant enough to put Nishiken up first? I see! Wow. Blanca versus Yurian! I guess they are all like really prepared for the Yurian. This is the Yurian festival. They kind of have four Yurian in, in a way to say like actually four of them kind of main Yurian. So it's a matter of uh, like Nishikin definitely has been practicing with his two Yurian teammates, Memo and Shuto. Makes sense. So yep. without any saying, I guess we know it's Yurian's advantage in this matchup, but experience can change everything. So we're going to see how OG, OG like yeah. in is gonna deal with uh, Ryuse, you know, Blanca. We're gonna see some it's, interesting. It's so interesting because of the fact that, you know, you have someone like Nemo, someone like Shuto to give you that kind of matchup experience, right? If you're looking to play against uh, some of the higher class Yurians, those are the two people you can look up to to give you that experience, right? So Nishiken is in very good hands. And just to mention, you know, we saw who else is left over in the team for uh, Session Khan. It's going to be Nemo and Shuto still waiting in the rafters because Yana is going to be the reserve for the team. Mm, seems like they've always been putting the uh, new first appearance one always at the so that they can come and take a look. Is it a strategy right here? It felt like there's been a uh, first appearance mm. usually and the young players to take a step back first for the first one. For most of the lineup we have seen so far. Wow, look at the big eyes from... That was a very big ice yeah. right there. Something to recommend. You, it makes it makes sense though. I mean, like you know, Nishikin between Nishikin and Yanai, uh, despite both of them having their first appearance in Street Fighter League, uh, they wanted to put like the veteran up there as a you know a, 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 kind of like a measuring tool, if you will. So Nishikin Maybe is going to be testing out the waters with that Blanco. Maybe, maybe nerves could be into it, but Yanai again, one of those characters I've been, or one of those players that I've been looking forward to seeing. He's not going to be in play for this matchup. And again, we talked about the roster so far for V6, or actually, you know, Team F uh, FAV. I really Two like how Tokido's team decision is to rest Sako, you know, uh, and put, you know, because we, we don't, you don't want to forget that Tokido already had extra two points in the preseason. You know? Okay, now they are trying to ask him, you know, how he feels about, you know, to fight against Yurian. And Nemo team, as you know, has been practicing a lot, you know, with this away and home format. I wonder how do they practice? It's hard. I mean, we've even heard it from the previous interview with Itazan saying, you know, like, there are so many variations to really anticipate. Practicing for all of them is, it's doable. But it's just a very intimidating task. That's just a lot of time, and you know he doesn't know if it's like efficient or not. So it's a very valid question. It's like how do you even practice as like you know being a part of like the away team or the home team? It's like you have to really consider every single variation as much as you can. I feel like for the home team, it's a lot easier to practice because like you can pick the order of the players that you want to practice. But for the away team, like Bonchan has to practice for every match. If you are hardworking enough to go and see Bonchan's GFN, he actually practiced against Gil, Yurian, Blanca, you know, Boxer, and G. He basically practiced for everyone. Because he's on the away team, you know, they really decided to put him as the anchor, right? And you know, he has a Sagat, he can't change his character right there. So he has to practice for everyone, every single matchup. Because he doesn't, he can only, he doesn't know who is gonna come up. He can anticipate, practice some matchup a bit more, which I feel is Gil. I think it's a kind of a choice that they are really going to. If Nemo is gonna pick Gil, Bonchan will be very ready for this matchup. Right. We'll see how it plays out. We gotta get there before we get there, right? Blanca versus Yurian is going to be the matchup. For Saishinkan versus FAV, Michigan is stepping up to the plate against Yusei. Talk to me about this matchup a little bit. Blanca versus Yurian is a matchup we don't ever get to see as often. 
But how should this be? How how do you think this, uh, this is gonna go down? Well, you know, as a commentator, you have not seen it. As a player, I don't see it even more. This is a very very rare match. <laughs> like, but I've seen Nishiki play a lot of it, but. This is a, definitely a rare matchup, but Nishikin is uh, someone who really likes to play very defensive, that's his play style, and he uses the B skill too really well. So people who are not familiar with it, you can see how he keep charging the B skill too, so that uh, yeah. Yuren cannot have the fireball advantage, you know, so this is play style generally. Okay, there's yeah, a big barely, counter hit right there. Barely, and the oh, read on the EX up ball, this is this is gonna be really bad. The mirror is just right there. This is not one guess. Second mirror again. Oh that is just one sequence. It's just basically like scoring the one hit and just bullying him in the corner because he chose the chose the top tier. Like I feel that Nishkin is playing the whole game correctly, <laughs> like but he just lost in that one sequence. I thought you were pretty funny. <laughs> but that's, that's what happens, right? As you're Yurian, or you're facing off against Yurian, you have to remember how big of a threat that mirror is. You put yourself in that con that uh, scenario. That's your fault, man. <laughs> yeah, and the stun riding up again. Look at how, like, Ryusei tries to lock down on the stun. Ooh, and what wait. an anti, the down heavy. I feel like gonna even Michigan wow. was surprised. Ryu like, say he, he's talking to himself, he's like, oh, I'm actually pretty sick. I'm actually pretty good at this game. <laughs> like, EX Rainbow Roll, like, getting knocked out by the down heavy and getting juggle and just stunned with all his health gone. Nishikin can't be too happy about that. But that was great play yeah. there from uh, Ryu say We gotta give credit. He played amazing. That dash in was perfect. You know. Yeah, I feel like Ryusei really takes his time in picking apart his opponents to very, very patient style, but once he gets his offense going, it is so intimidating. Nishikin has not found the right answers in that corner, so hopefully he can play it out here in the neutral phase of the game, or at least mid-stage, and not suffer the wrath of Yurian in the corner. Basically, defense versus offense right here. Like, you can tell that uh, Ryusei has no intention of going on the fan side. Oh, Nishikin, nice slide right there over the fireball. Kin is playing it very slow, checking on the dash, you know, charging the beast skill too, being passive, waiting for a chance. But Yuren just took one chance from here. Wow, and those jammings. Yeah. Everything was uh, working out really well. The OG being on the new trigger was nothing surprising right here. Oh. Nice, that the was side so switch ambiguous. As well. Very smart. Ridiculously ambiguous. Big whiff punish from the side of Yusei. Okay, Kin look like gonna touch up the B skill. Very tricky right here, dashing in and out, not always charging the full B skill. Big counter hit conversion, pretty decent actually to move himself uh, further away from, from Yurian. Oh! Like, Blanca's B skill too isn't really that fast, but you can tell that, uh, like, wow, the anti against the rainbow roll. Like, Real Estate is so perfect in like dealing with all the different EX Rainbow Rolls so far. Now the B trigger two. This is the chance. Ooh. No way! He doesn't want to let Nishikin activate the B trigger. He just went in really fast. You know, with all the different string of attack. Because if uh, Nishikin yeah. managed to activate the B trigger, it may be game changing. That could turn the table around. He recognizes that and go the win first instead. Now did he, have, with the same did he have trigger available? Because I know he used the uh, V-Shift a little bit earlier. I couldn't even remember if he built up that much bar afterwards. You might be right, actually. Yeah, but I think they used so much B skill. Like, the reason he used the B skill too is to build up a lot of the B meter so that he can get into the B trigger faster. Look at his health right now. He already have like two B bar already. It all goes to with the B skill too. I think that's why he really liked about the B skill too. But it gains a lot of B meter whenever he uses it. It's a very difficult B skill to use because it's not strong. Like a strong B, yeah. B skill does not look like this. Look at the B meter gain right here. He's getting his B trigger right now, even with his 50% health. Yeah. So it's gonna be pretty imperative, right? I mean, like you know, despite being at the life deficit, Urian with the trigger can still be a threat. But now 
Nishikin. Yes, sir. You thought you could move out of that EX electricity? No way. Nishikin is checking that movement against Ryusei. Nice way to tie it up one on one. Perfect string right there. Down medium kick into the EX CD plus four into another down medium. He can still go into the light rolling to the V trigger cube ball. I still get a plus. So the pressure going on is going to be insane, you know, at that moment. So Ryusei do have to do something right there and make a Round bad one. decision right there. Fight. I would say that Chicken is playing really well. His strategy has an OG mm -hmm. kind of player. Charging the B-Skill too, waiting for opportunity has been doing really well against yeah. uh, Urim. Yeah, no, his adaptation in, in this matchup entirely is, is, is night and day. You're seeing a lot more activity in the neutral and way more awareness of what Ryusei wants to do. You can see Ryusei really falling by the wayside in pretty much like round after round. But we'll see what happens now in the corner. You cannot chase the rainbow wall. Rainbow wall is down that easily. Yeah, he's been chasing on the ES rainbow ball like many times already. So I think it's a... Uh, look at that. Now we got to deal with the mirror. If he survived this mirror, He's gonna get the chance to play his V trigger game. No, this is so dangerous. So oh, this may be one pixel. This gets cracked in place. Oh. No. Han, that was saddest thing to do sometimes. You don't like to see yeah, weirds like this happen. It's it's tough, man. The robbery factor is there with that V trigger. The two Aegis reflectors is all that he needs. Mind you, Nishikin was in the lead really early in that round and just lost all of it as soon as he was in that corner. So again, Ryusei has doing a great job of keeping his composure and letting the offense rock. Nishikin has been landing the BSQ2 like way more than he, he should like. He's using it so well. Whoa. Doing the entire too early. Now, let, let us watch Blanca's v Yay! Okay. Now he's gonna go for the... The countermeasure that uh, Ryusei is having looks really oh. well so far. What? He tried to go for... Uh, what did he try to do? Into the corner? I don't really like that. This is looking really bad. Oh, you're dead. What? You're actually dead. That was so cheap of oh, Ryusei. Like, I felt that the biggest mistake Nishikin was to hop over into the corner. That was a bait against... What like, was uh, that? It's just to bait like tag trolls and bait out the EX headbutt. If you do an EX headbutt or you press the troll, you actually go to the other side. It was kind of like a jump in into the corner. It's a it's a very it's, it's just a more riskier version because like you're playing Blanca. I would rather he did he do a jump in into the corner, you know, rather than the hop right there. Like yeah, that's what I'm honey. saying. Like, I, I it's something like, that you know, Blanca why, plays. In a sense, that, like. Like, it's, it's a question of why did he choose that option when he has, like, not like why would he do that because, like, what would happen? It's more like, I feel like the options that you have against Yurian because EX Headbutt is not invincible frame one or even, like, frame three, you could literally just throw in a meaty jab to stuff like any wig up throw options, wig up button options, and still be in time to recover and be safe from EX Headbutt. So I'm thinking to myself, like, as Nishikin, like, why did that decision come to his mind towards the end, right? I think he can throw a light to bait out the EX, EX hit but but then like maybe percent doing a hop you can still you can still get the tech throw you know you can it's a two in one basically it's not a good decision you know as uh but I guess he made a point right there you know so maybe he already decided to go go for the decision ready now we're gonna see yeah, who where who they're gonna decide to put for the second player. Nishikin's loss really put his team in a not so good position because Ryusei is the weakest player in B6 FAB Rotosi. That loss is not a good good one looking good there for <laughs> Team Saishoke. Yeah, I agree. I think um, going into it now, I wouldn't be surprised if Shuto went up next and Nemo would want to get the matchup against Zhuang Chan. Um, but we'll see. Come on. We'll see how it works out. They're just joking that Yanai should go in the next round. <laughs> more logical decisions, really. I really think Nemo should go for the last one. No, no, no. I mean, Nemo should go for the last one. There's just no way Shuto or Yanai can take this responsibility right here to fight against Bon Chan Saga. Sagat is basically they a wanna... character that is good against big characters like Yurin or like G. It's not that great, 
but that is what the uh, Bonchan basically uses his Saka fight for. He always wins matchup like you know, G or Yurin. So I really want to see Nemo busting up his gear right here. You know, because I'm not very confident if like anything good is gonna happen if Nemo decide to go right here. Yeah. I wonder how it's gonna play out if Shuto does happen to go up next against uh Tokido. Right? I'm kinda nervous because Shuto has been rocking Yurian for quite some time now, and Tokido is technically like the new kid on the block. When it comes to playing Yurian this year, he's had Yurian before, but he's shown it off way more in 2021 than prior years. However, Shuto has stuck to this character for quite some time as well, so I wanna know. I mean, he has a bison, you know, since the season one, but ever since he has been a Yurian player. So he definitely has more Yurian mirror match experience compared to Tokido. No, because his team leader is Nemo as well, who actually also plays Yurin. But Tokido also has a uh, uh, Ryusei to practice the Yurin Mirror match. So I would definitely say that this is going to be a Yurin festival right here. No matter how you I am very impressed also with Tokido with the squat rack behind him. Pretty intimidating. I'm glad that he keeps up with his workout regimen and that his uh, fighting game setup is in the gym. I like that a lot. I can, I can appreciate that. And he's got 25 pounds on the rack sitting there. I like it. That is the one of the... Uh, Perfect example, you know, a pro esports player. You know, getting some uh, translation from the interview, like they actually had been joking that Yana should go on the next round, but I guess Yana didn't. So he probably didn't want to face Tokido. But now that he's a, the, he's the reserve, you know, Nemo still think that's actually winnable. So Shuto, def he definitely think that Shuto has a chance against Tokido in the mirror match. So I would like to see if uh, Nemo's confidence in his uh, young teammate did right or did it wrong. Yeah. And so we saw that interview earlier uh, for Bonchan as Tokido gets himself ready. Bonchan said he's very focused with today's match because his kids are being taken care of by his family. So he gets to completely focus on the match at hand. I like that. And we are getting a couple of words from Tokido. That was so perfect for, you know, Bonchan get to focus fully, so he's putting him in the responsibility to play the two-point match with Sagat. Sagat playing the two-point match? Wow, I'm looking forward. I know Gil is a pretty good counter against Sagat because Gil has a very nice area and fireball. I will talk about that later. Let's focus on the match right now. We got Tokido, sure. Yurian versus Kyoto Yuri. Who do you think is going to win? Yuri, 100%. So all jokes aside, I think, you know, Shuto might have the upper hand because you mentioned it earlier, you prefaced the matchup with saying that Shuto might have more experience in the mirror match. However, with the prowess of Tokido and the accolades that he's had and his adaptation overall in fighting games in general, I think experience-wise, it might be the benefactor for this matchup. I think having the experience plays a, a good role in, you know, trying to figure out adaptations on the fly. But who knows? Shuto has more of that mirror match uh, experience too. So we'll see. He definitely has more experience in the mirror match, no? Because like Tokido actually fully switched only like one year maybe. Like, while well, Shuto has been maining that character since forever. So there's just no way I would see that uh, experience-wise Shuto would lose out. But then, we all know Tokido is Tokido. Even though he may have less experience, things may not go out the way that we think. So, it's gonna go straight into the match right here. It's a Urian mirror. That's a Warlord Urian right there. Shuto is a Warlord Urian. The experience is written on his rank. A Warlord. Who's at the higher rank right now? I can't tell. Oh, it's uh, Shuto. Shuto's at what? 106? It's a... Uh, oh, I can't tell. Yeah, just a little bit, but they are both Warlords. Show how much time they have been spent. Okay, let's see how this Mirror Master shit plays out. Yeah, both using a lot of medium kick right here. And Fireball. Oh, what a punish! punish. 
the recognition that the fireball was too close. Wow, Tokido being Tokido. You know, who doubted Tokido here? Who who said that? Huh? Chat, I, own up to it right now. Did you guys doubt Tokido? Sen, did you doubt Tokido? I, I, I want to <laughs> doubt Tokido, but I can't. I mean... <laughs> I mean, it's really sad. I mean, he can play any character and he may be the best one. That's just a fact that's, right there, you know? That's so cheating. That's actually cheating. It's one of those memes. It's like, you can only pick one skill. Uh, Tokido, unfortunately, has the power of a god and can pick every skill on the board. So, yep. we'll see what happens, though. Shuto is fighting back now. Yeah, pushing Tokido into the corner. A lot more mediums in play in terms of counter poking. And yeah, he's hovering around some of the ranges that Tokido might want to press buttons at, and he's kind of poking a lot, or trying to. Yeah, you look at the, the medium punch, is so, uh, it's so good because, like, they all have been using the medium punch because once you get a counter hit, it's one of the most warding button in the game. So, yeah. just going for this approach right here. Nice, but for the stand like factor. Now Tokido has the, has the mirror. Tokido is one of the Urian players that I know that doesn't activate it that uses the mirror really, really well. Especially the second mirror. He doesn't just throw it out Ooh. like this. Always wait for a perfect opportunity. There you go. Oh, it's been a perfect opportunity. Shuto nope. using his V-meter very well. He dodged the first mirror with a V-shift, then the second one in time with a V-reversal. And you know there's not going to be another mirror coming out from Shuto. He's just going to be using the rest of the V-gauge to for, def for defense. How like Shuto is dashing and he's just afraid to press a button, knowing that uh, like Tokido is checking. Ooh, that the B ship oh that was God. that wow. was too good. The B ship, God, the EX. Wow. Oh, you thought you could charge it up in front of him? Tokido interrupting at the right time, but here comes Shuto now. EX headbutt instead. Tokido. Both of these cats are swinging for the fences now. The balls to charge it right in Tokido's face. Okay, full meter right there for Shuto. Uses one right there. Corner. That is how you win the match. Tokido is very, very fast right here. He just uh, can you at the pace of the match. Now oh, and the EX hit, it? but Shuto couldn't control his pull right there. And just, you know, went for the ESF but desperate to land the hit so that he can start off with the AG Flector, but just couldn't... I think uh, it's the Clutch Factor right there. The Clutch Factor is not enough. Shuto right here. No. Not enough. Um, and to be fair, Tokido, uh, the Round way he one. set that up, he threw out a crouching right. Light Kick. He was going to be safe either way. Shuto, fully aware of the situation of having that EX headbutt in hand, but you're you're knocked down. It's like you you understand that there are many ways to bait it out. So he took a risk. Yeah, they're just playing the, gamble, he's just the, playing the bad that. Go ahead. So he's just playing the bad that uh, he's uh, not going for like a light button. It's more like going for an EX headbutt or like a throw or something. Nice, getting into yeah. the. Okay, Ugh. get in the corner right here. Oh, I'm backing away from the stun. As soon as he loses his opportunity to finish it off, I do like that. But here comes Tokido. This is going to be great, too. So if he gets hit by the second mirror or whatever the setup is, it's going to be all right. I feel like, yeah, the mirror reversal that was is gone. Good, good reversal right there, getting off the stun. Second mirror. Nope, saves it. Tokido, the genius. Wow, look at this. Look at the experience from both of them right here. Those Deja making Tokido just crouching. He's not moving at all. He's like, I'm gonna take the throw if you if you can you walk and throw me? I can't believe Tokido, Tokido just, dashed. Tokido is so clutch, right? He's just blocking, he's trying to make Shuto work for his win. Oh ah, my god. I wonder if that crouching heavy punch was like a two steps ahead kind of thinking. That decision yeah, yeah. would have been you great can, uh, if, if Shuto actually dash. decided to do a late tech or a back dash too, yeah. Exactly, you're right. If you did a late tech or a back dash, you would actually just caught it. So, so it's, a, it's a all for one right there. Oh, the counter wasn't enough. Yeah, he's too far out. He didn't get the third off of it, but now Shuto in full control. 
We talked about it earlier, right? We talked about how much experience Sukido has overall, but Shuto is looking like the better man when it comes to the mirror match, at least in game two. Big headbutt on the way out. Another one! They're both not respecting, or we can say over-respecting each other. Wow, what a oh, jump right the there. Is not gonna help. Oh boy. Another similar situation as the previous round. Shuto with a good amount of life left. What? Okay. Tokido really fighting for making Shuto work for that one pixel. I can't believe that. He just. Oh! Again! That is the second time Shuto has used the B shift against. Tokido, wow. Did you, you just see Shuto out? pop? Did you see him pop off after that happened? Yeah, he had to he was walk, throwing but his he hands really up in the on. air. Oh my god. Hey, one to one. That's actually pretty good. I Not could see all. a fight back right, right from here. Round one. Fight. Who doubted Shuto? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All jokes aside, we talked about this earlier, right? Sam prefaced it with saying, you know, Shuto does have the better experience when it comes to the mirror match, and Tokido just overall has been in the game for quite some time. We're seeing the new blood with Shuto getting the upper hand against Tokido, and that's really refreshing to see, to be honest with you. Yep. Uh, not to forget, it's also a young versus old. Tokido has a lot of experience, but Shuto is... Wow, look at that buffer right there. And the movement, he's moving faster than anything right here. All the reversal, EX knee. Went a little bit over extend right here, now you're gonna deal with the mix up. Guess correctly, please. Wow, perfect timing for the V shift. Yeah, and he has another one just in case. Oh, this is gonna be a big oh, chance wow. for the Kido now. No, not like this. Whoa. Now he's still got a that chance. That was actually sick! No, I. I think that was great! It forced Takedo to block and it got rid of the mirror so that he's not able to convert off of it. That was genius! Really clutch play from both players so far, but this... No! Oh! Takedo with the... Getting hit with the fireball from the four medium? No, not like this. It felt like a, a mistake fall. right there. What?! You can't quarrel punch a fireball! Even if it's your own! Oh my god, that was wrong. Oh my wow. god, he still baited it out! This is looking all Shuto, so strong right now. Tokido stuck in this corner, the elbow is there! One more, Not there one yet more. with the stun! Oh, no side switch right there. Maybe he can't get oh. it. Oh. No way, going for the traditional empty low. Oh my god, he chased down the beast just dirty, man! Takedo is still not going to have enough closer. That B-Shift punish was sick. Oh, wow, the awareness oh, back again. Anti-air. Shuto playing like an old man, taking Three down the legend, wins. the evil champion. Two. Two in a row, stand heavy kick. That was impressive. Like, like no one expected Takedo to jump like two in a row that fast at a moment. He just showing why he's a young man reaction. You can't jump on me, not a cross-up, but Yuren has always used down heavy punch as a cross-up. That stand heavy kick was with a little bit of anticipation. You Shuto knows, you know, and is ready for it. That makes it really impressive. Look how happy he is right there. That was extremely impressive from Shuto. To be quite honest with you, you saw how much dominance Tokido had in the first round. That is pretty intimidating going up into it, but Shuto maintaining his composure after that first round and understanding the situation is like, you know, I've played a lot more mirror matches than this guy has. I'm going to show up and I'm going to show him some things that he hasn't even done to me yet. One of the biggest differences I've seen between these two Yurians is the defensive choices that Shuto has made with his V-Gage. Yeah, look at the stats right here. Tokido, 0 slash 6. That was, I think this entire stats is just meant to embarrass people. I, I'm very happy that I'm sitting right here and I feel like this entire stats is just really meant to embarrass people because like, even a god like Tokido has 0%.
best yeah. actually pretty and funny. And there's opportunities for him to actually anti-air, right? It's not like zero for zero, zero percent. It was like zero for six. All right. Yes. Yes. This is actually really funny to see. I, I don't think it matters at all. You know. Hey, we get to see the dream man. Both of them is uh. This is kind of anticipated by Bodge. Like Tokido has been playing some guild against Bonchan. When I saw in their CFN, I was so shocked. Like they were so confident that Nemo was gonna go in with Gil. And of course Nemo had anticipated that he's gonna be fighting against Guy. Gil, this is gonna be This is gonna be a very interesting one. Like I right. can't say Saga has advantage right here. But this is Bonchan that we are talking about. The fireball game will be heavily in like Gil's favor, where like Gil can actually do parry the tiger shot as well. So yeah, that's true. That's pretty imperative, so right? You're using the parry to build up the V trigger, and we know how how solid uh, that V trigger is with Gil. Um, yep. And also the biggest takeaway with using that v skill not only does it disrupt the or not only does it build v gauge but it disrupts the timing of sagat also a little bit yep. so one has to use the high and the low tiger shot perfectly to disrupt the timing you know but and i believe the matchup has been played on a top screen distance watch is not gonna go anywhere further from gil he's always gonna stay close to gil because sagat has no way of winning the matchup if you try to stay away look at look at bonchan always keeping his distance close against Gil. He doesn't want to stay anywhere further than House Street. He was just going to go back in. Dash. And I like that. Oh, boy. Flame Javelin coming through two times over. Triple quadruple dash forward. Back throw into the corner now. Bonchan in full control. This is tough. What a time to use that V-Skill and Bonchan getting up in his face. As you mentioned, wants to play close quarters as much as possible. And he has been switching up his tiger shot low and high timing so they can mess up Nemo from reacting to the parry. He just didn't get the conversion of the high. Wow, with the EX right here. Look how really both of them is in this matchup. Wow. Recognizing the gap using the ESDV to pass through the fireball is really good. Look at those high and low tiger shots from Bonchan. Showing why he's one of the best when it comes to the fireball game like this. Even though like uh, Gil has advantage when it comes to the neutral game, Bonchan is showing that the uh, fireball game right here is clearly showing the advantage. Nice. Oh my god, that Look was a sick bit converted full screen. No, you committed to the, the Larian? Oh my god, covering the V-Shift. Get him out of here. Bonchan with a very dominant so first win. game. A lot of patience being played for Bonchan. There was a lot of time. Uh, being taken out from each and every one of those rounds. But you mentioned it, right? You mentioned about how important the spacing is when it comes to this matchup. Sagat, again, being able to throw out these tiger shots and whatnot, being just like a third away, just like not too far away oh, from boy. their opponent is absolutely pivotal. Right. Because if you are really far away in this matchup, like, you can't react to the... You can, you can react to parry the fireball, not much you can be doing. So, wow, even recognizing that it's uh, punishable was kind of sick. I like how uh, Nemo has changed his momentum right here, a little bit more offensive. Now you have to slow the ice trap. The reason why oh, Nemo is uh, stopping his down medium into the fireball is because Bonchan has showed that he had EXDP over it, and Nemo is trying to mess up his timing. The defense from uh, Nemo is not... There you go. Oh, Harry's right here. Oh! What? You tried that to move in, sick. but Nemo, that was actually sick with the confirm. Now, meaning in the fireball, it's a it's good range as well, so even if he, he misses it, it's still safe. It's a, it's a safe string into a, into a confirm. So that was very good choice there from Nemo. I don't know what is that. Tried to, I don't even know, tried to place the knees above the neck. I don't even know. Oh, you tried to parry, getting full crush counter. Now, Bonchan in control. Excellent position, I would say, for Bonchan. Like, it's no use on it. Yep. Parrying in between the string into medium kick into V trigger, that's a highlight trail right there. 
Oh, that again. is so familiar. That was so cool. Those uh, carries. Uh. Now, Bocha is being very careful because he's in a high state right here. Like anything would have oh made him God. into a retribution. The flame wow. javelin comes in. Retribution does connect as well. What's gonna be the setup? Four throw. Is he gonna let this retribution rock? Is he even gonna get it? No, sir. Here comes Bon Chan. Not getting a lot any sort of damage scaling. Oh, you dead? Oh. You're hella dead. You have to be kidding me, Bon Chan, using the V trigger one. Multi hit tiger shot, you know, the pass through. That was so good. They must be missing so quite a bit of time right there. Bon Chan's jumping timing is very unpredictable so far. Oh. I like really? that. We talked about that earlier, right? Going through the string. If there's a significant gap, he is able to tiger uppercut past the fireball. That was so good, like. The recognition to do it at the right timing, even though Nemo has been faking out here and there. No, nope. get the time freeze. Didn't really get a combo though. Okay, we got an ice. That's gonna be great. You know that that flame javelin coming in from full screen, although it traded. I think for Nemo is gonna be just fine. Okay, no more now. trigger up on deck though. Nemo just finished his trigger, but he still a lot of health left. Bonchan keeping it. Look at Bon Chan's tiger shot timing right here. Oh, double so parry! Good. No buttons in the tiger shot for Bon Chan, and you know they are both interrupting each other's button in the fireball. One with parry and one with the DP. That is kind of sick. Kind of scary. Bon trying to close in the distance. One hit, one chance, one medium kick, one button. Really? No! You're kidding no. me! Wow! The oh, fireball! He went into the tiger shot! He tried to marry it! Nemo thought Bonchan was gonna go and backdash his way to victory! So the Lariat came out from Nemo and Bonchan sniffed it out with a high tiger shot. Two games straight. But that still could have gone either way. That was so clutch from Bonchan to switch it up. It was really clutch from Bonchan and it's a little bit unlucky from Nemo's side that Bonchan misses the tiger shot, go into an overhead, just uh, scrambling out with an EXDP. This is not looking like Nemo's day, but I feel like Nemo is starting to catch the, the momentum and the phrase of how to play against like this matchup. I feel like Nemo is really is almost catching out on it, so that's a chance. But I'm not sure if you're able to come three in a row against Bonchan. Of a caliber like Bonchan. That's very valid too, because someone like Bonchan is always changing up his playstyle uh, to, you know, keep it ambiguous. But when it comes to the corner play though and this offensive pressure, that's gonna stay the same. He's forcing you to figure out the solution. He's now getting a little bit more offensive. Okay, get a good conversion. No, a little bit too far to convert that. When it comes to the late game, oh. like uh Nice counter here right there. Retribution, corner, scoring more damage right here. One shimmy on throw. The, oh I like the back dash there from Bonchan. Goes unscathed. I can't believe it. Bonchan still has trigger on deck too. The jump in. No, sir. Nice, Sandy. Oh. Bonchan just walking in. He wants to activate the V trigger for a comeback. He's feeling himself right there. Wow, what a conversion of the ice ball! Out of the oh, neutral, this is so good right here. Nemo's a uh... Nemo could be like having a really oh, good no! lift, but now he's. Oh, I'm so curious about those variants, man. That's the second time he's, I, we've seen it get punished that way. I, I'm not sure what Nemo's plan is. That. Oh, very early ex uh, okay. tiger uppercut to stop the knees. Down medium punch. Well, he and his brother is really good at using the down medium punch. Okay, high, really high tiger shot. Wow, oh, that was what a sick! Th Just bursting through, that was nasty! Retribution again! What is going Perfectly on? Perfectly calculated Bonchan. right there. Nemo calculated the perfect distance to go for the... running... that speeding move, you know, along with the ice fireball.
That was such I a pity. It could have I... been 2 1 in Nemo's favor. But then now Nemo has to play the chase back game. Round one. Nemo knows he has to win this, that he's ready for Sagat. Yeah. And Bonchan knows he's facing this matchup. Bonchan wants to play this matchup. I, I don't know what happened in that last sequence. Why did Bonchan get hit with the cryokinesis? I, I can't understand it. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to do something, right? Like, it, it, may, it may just be an executioner error right there. The situation is so yeah. intense. Was going Possibly. for some jumps here and there. Changing out the playstyle. Technically, in this matchup, like, uh, Gyu doesn't really need to jump since he's so control of the ground game. But Nemo is also mixing in jump to, to make sure that Bonchan is not uh, just doing whatever he wants. Yeah, this is gonna be imperative for, for Nemo to try to get out of, but Bonchan using that V-Shift correctly, locking him down in this corner. Although he's not netting any clean hits, he's getting a lot of chip damage, a lot of gray life on the side against Nemo. The v -shift. there he goes, yeah, cashes out a significant amount of gray life and the full conversion. Nemo is in dire straits. Bonchan now at match point yet again. A little overextend right there. No! Bonchan switches his gameplay again now. Just moving in forward. He wants to push Nemo. So many jump in right there from this uh, match point from Bonchan. Nice punish, that was oh minus 6. God, what a punish too, this game jab into it. Okay, recognizing the rage, knowing that it's a minus 6 on block, perfect punish, making one of the best saga in the world. Not one, I mean Ooh. the best. Flame Javelin does get the Retribution, there's gonna be a lot of carry involved, gassing up, went to the, to the throw now. Critical Heart is on deck for Nemo, if he gets a solid hit on conversion, I think he might be able to do it. Oh, no more trigger left. And oh. again! Oh, Bonchan what? making a statement. EX Tiger uppercut past the fireball. Get out of here! Wow, that was EX uppercut, you know, and normal uppercut as well, you know. Different range, different usage, passing through. He completely know when to go for which one. The amazing mix of the high and low Tiger shot. Timing, you know, to, to mess up the parry timing. The jamins were on point on different range. You know, the offense, the defense. I think Bonchan played very perfect in this matchup. Anyone who has played this matchup know that it's not an easy match because of how, like, Nemo, like, Gil just had so much control in the neutral game of those slow and fast fireball, the EX Tackle, you know, and EX Knee, the parry. Amazing. Congrats to you, V6, FAV, Roto Z. Look at those faces. I was thought there, there isn't really a surprise. But there will be a away team interview right now for them. They are one of the best team right here. Nothing surprising. Very interesting to see how it played out too. When you're taking a look at these stats overall, Big, big numbers from the side of Bonchan. Three out of five, sixty percent when it comes to anti-air department. Hitting a very pivotal invincible reversal, one for one, a hundred percent. Now, again, we're talking about this team right here. V6 plus FAV Roto Z. They technically have five points, right? Yusei got a W. Tokido fell by the wayside, but Bonchan got his W. So one point. Plus Bon Chance 2, plus the two bonus points that Tokido scored in the preseason puts him at a pretty significant advantage. Actually, at first place, if I'm not mistaken. Really not as bad. Uh, Tokido is uh, uh, the only one that lost. So it wasn't really that bad of a round for a game for Nemo's team, I felt. At least Shuto managed to win against Tokido. I feel that that was a big yeah, that was huge. Absolutely huge. You right. And so, yeah. <laughs> Is that a ferret? Oh. Very cute ferret. Yeah. One chat is playing a little bit of chub and Kido is saying you say is the best. <laughs> He's just appearing really, really kawaii. 
そうなんだ。全員リーダー生まれるっていう。そんな印象の話でしたね。そう。いや、overall the discussion with A the away team it's just pretty much how they were gonna deal with Nemo and that they are very much so satisfied with this result as they should be honestly because that could have been either way Nemo falling by the wayside pretty early in that setup or in that matchup. You gotta admit that's gonna be pretty heartbreaking as we move over into the um. The home team to hear what they have to say in their interview as well. Kind of a sad situation. They are very satisfied with the result, you know. And the, the leader for FAB is actually Sako, but then, like, everyone is kind of wondering who is actually the leader because, you know, Bonchan can be the leader in the team, you know, right? And Tokido can be the leader. Sako can be the leader, but Sako is the actual leader for the team. It's so hard to recognize who is the leader because of how strong he is. So, I really look forward to them、uh, getting more wins. 3-1 is not a result. I don't think it's a bad result for s o s h u k e n to be honest. Because, like, how strong this team actually is, but this is looking. Very unbalanced. Yeah. Yeah. So you see there, V6 plus FAV, Roto Z in first place with five points. Good Egg Squad with、uh, second place.、Uh, Couple Fun Detonation in third. And you see Shinobi is following right through. And you can see what's happening next week. Nagoya Oja Body Stars versus Sai Shunkan, s o u Kumamoto. And of course, V6 going up against Team Gyogun. You guys do not want to miss that second section and be sure to mark those calendars. Sien, it's been an absolute pleasure. We've been going through all of these matches. We'll be sure to catch you guys next time. Make sure you catch the next episode.